but it makes your life 100,000 bajillion gazillion times easier. Sorry if it's kind of hard to see, but we got the intake off. There is all kinds of debris down there, so we get a vacuum, vacuum all that up. We have the uh, old uh, intake gaskets right here. I got new ones, so replace those. There's the starter. One thing I forgot is it has two, um, this wiring harness on the passenger side has two metal clips. There's one right there, and then the other one's right there. I forgot about that. Two 10 millimeter bolts hold that on. Uh, so on the intake, there's four studs on each corner, right? So you can see right there, there's one, there's one over there. And then you have, so obviously you have bolts, you have nuts for the four corners. Then you have these bolts as well. Some guys are using the star Torx pattern to get these out. You don't have to do that. I don't understand it why risk why risk stripping this out when you can just use a 14 millimeter on the bolt head itself so don't use a torx use a 14 millimeter bolt or socket to get the 14 millimeter bolt out duh when you guys go to install these it's kind of way way down there so you can put like a piece of paper towel in your 14 millimeter socket and they'll hold it that way to get it started um let's see what else what else uh not much it really wasn't hard to get it out uh the throttle body stays all there i'm gonna replace these two coolant hoses um once i get the right ones from the toyota dealership tried it at, at uh, o'reilly's but they didn't have it um next thing we'll do is to loosen up the 14 millimeter bolts on the back side of the alt or the starter and then start pulling it out getting it out of the way and go from there sorry I didn't show you guys all the uh, nitty-gritty hoses and all that stuff but I'll just do uh, like a quick overview of tips and tricks on how to get this out it really wasn't all that hard to get the intake out but the starter could be um, could be another matter if uh, it's seized in there from rust if you're working on a Tundra or a Sequoia with a 4.7 liter you're trying to do the starter one thing that I have to mention you guys that makes your life so much easier is to remove the crossover coolant pipe. This buddy right here actually sits like this, right? Take the hose off first and you have four 12 millimeter bolts that hold it in right there on the studs and then right down there as well. I'll put uh, links down in the description below for the gaskets. There's an o-ring there, an o-ring on that side and then the intake gaskets. But it makes your life 100,000 bajillion gazillion times easier when you're trying to remove the screws on the back of the starter. All right, there's three screws that you have to get out, three bolts. They're a pain in the butt. So now that I have it off, I have all the bolts out. I can actually just grab it. Not like that. And it comes right out. I can take off the connection on this side. But one thing to note is that if you buy a starter or an alternator from Toyota, you will not get core credit unless the starter or alternator that you bring back is a genuine Toyota starter or alternator. All right, so keep that in mind. So if you get down here and you have something from AutoZone or Riley's or Napa and you, and you want to put a original remanufactured one in from Toyota, they will not take your core. And I think it's right around 100 bucks. Yeah, if you guys want to make your life easier, Take out that crossover pipe and that coolant crossover pipe makes it so much easier to get those bolts out.